I think we'll call this one 29. Yeah, could be 28, but let's call it 29 just to be sure. 29 degrees. Starting mileage. Get the light out of it here. 43, 409.7. 43409.7. Okay, I think we're going to take it out on the highway today. I'm pretty confident that uh, it's handling good, it's running good. Shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Ah, oh, there's a nice inflatable Santa Claus there. That's a tall one. I don't think I've seen one quite that big. Huh, pretty good. So it looks like John has been the first one to qualify as an individual. Now, got to see who's going to be the first to qualify as a team. Let's see what happens with that. Read something interesting in the news today. Something a lot of us bikers have been looking forward to. I guess North Carolina a while back stopped allowing trucks, large trucks, I should say, semi-tractor trailer combinations on the tail of the dragon and now I guess finally Tennessee has changed the law very much overdue a few years ago I lost a friend because of that happening a truck driver that probably didn't have quite the experience of a lot of other truckers and I don't want to put down truckers at all because I drove a truck myself and had a CDL license and uh, I can't say I was ever mistake free but uh, best way to solve this problem, I agree, is just to uh, not let any big large trucks on uh, Tail of the Dragon. That's a uh, twisty, turny road that there is no way for a typical semi like that one you see coming across the intersection here. You just cannot travel the Tail of the Dragon without cutting off two lanes constantly on every turn. It just it can't happen any other way. There's no way you can do it. So now, at least in the future now, hopefully no, man, no other bikers will uh, lose their life due to a large truck blocking off two lanes. Because when you come around, there's a, if those of you that don't know the Dragon, it's a 318 twisty turnies and 11 miles. And on one side, it's a drop off, and on the other side, it's the face of a cliff. So you would be coming around like you'd come around to the right on a turn and on the right side would be a cliff so you couldn't see the turn was so sharp around you and if you came around and a uh, large truck was making a turn and taking up both lanes you're either going to be very fortunate to have uh, Superman-like reactions or you're probably going to end up going down and getting hurt if not killed. So glad to see that law pass and uh, hope it stays that way. I guess they will allow up to 30 foot delivery trucks so uh, I can see needing some sort of trucks because people live on the road too so you do have to have a way for people to get deliveries and you have to have a way for uh, goods being moved in there but yeah you can do it on a 30 footer truck and do just fine. It's not a problem. My subject I want to talk about today is backups and I want to talk about this from personal experience I did on my uh, weekly science show I did a little bit about backups and I'm going to touch on it a little bit more there was uh, some suggestions from viewers on that show to add to it about stuff that I didn't quite cover that I probably should have but I'm just going to relate right now my personal experience with backups I uh, had always had an extra hard drive connected up to my machine I think ever since maybe the second or third machine I ever built because I was accumulating files and I didn't want to lose them so I would always have a second hard drive and then I would either just manually every day do a backup myself or I would get a backup program and set it on some kind of timer to back up uh, every day sometimes every two to three days depending on how fast I was adding new files so that I would never lose very much work and I would never lose 
anything really of value. But sometimes there's a way that things can just happen strangely and on one particular day my main hard drive went down and I thought well it's going to be a pain in the butt to reload the operating system but at least I got all my data files backed up and wouldn't you know it I go to use my backup drive and it starts acting kind of funny on me. It's uh, just uh, not showing the files correctly, getting errors and stuff like that and basically within a few minutes it died too. So I was there with uh, main drive totally dead. Main drive wouldn't even power up. The secondary drive, it would actually run and spin up, so it was actually, the motor was actually running and I could hear the little sensor doohickey, which is kind of like a turntable arm in there, trying to read the data, so it was somewhat functional, but it just wasn't functional enough to get any information that I could retrieve. So I'm like, oh great, what do I do now? And so, for a few hours I just kind of kept monkeying around with it, couldn't figure out anything to do to get it to work, so I figured, well, when I used to work on electronics, it was an old trick we used to do uh, with circuit boards. And uh, if you would have a circuit board that was being intermittent on you or not working properly, sometimes you'd put it in the freezer, you'd wrap it up so that it wouldn't get any moisture on it, you'd wrap it up real tight in an airproof container or an airproof bag, and then what you would do is you just let it come all the way down to freezer temperature, you know, leave it in there for half a day, overnight, probably at least 12 hours just to be sure, and get it down completely frozen. And sometimes when you pulled it out, if you took it out of the bag, the circuit would come back to life, at least for a small period of time till it warmed up again. Well, I did that with the hard drive, put it in the freezer, I think overnight is what I did, and then the next morning I got up and got it out of the freezer, unwrapped it, and uh, it would turn, but I still couldn't get any information out of it. And then slowly, as it actually warmed up close to room temperature, it started functioning, and I was starting to see the, the files and the folders and stuff like that. And believe it or not, it, it stayed alive for about 20 minutes till it warmed all the way up to room temperature. It was just at some in-between temperature, probably 20, 30 degrees below room temperature, to where everything seemed to work right in it. And I just finished retrieving all the information I needed to, and then it went right back into error mode again. So just that little bit of temperature fluctuation there. And what some people think happens, and I've heard different theories, and it could not even it could even be that it's not possibly this, but what they say is there's little breaks in the circuits themselves on the circuit board and when they expand and contract they either make contact or don't and sometimes by freezing these boards it shrinks up and makes contact again where it didn't before. Um, some people think it's down in the transistor level if there's some kind of transistors or diodes that down in the um, guts of the diode or the transistor itself it makes connections that it didn't make before just because of the temperature difference. Um, I couldn't really tell you. All I can tell you is that it may have been a one in a million shot, but it worked for me, so uh... The other option I've had people that are really, really super geeks be able to do is uh, swap out the control boards or even swap out the motors on them too, although in a lot of cases you're leaving it open, the whole hard drive itself open and exposed with the platters exposed to the air and uh, I've heard different stories about how long that will last. Some people have told me that yeah, it will eventually cause the hard drive to fail if you open it up and replace a motor so that the platters will spin again if you have the, enough talent to do that. And it will buy you, they say it'll buy you just enough time to get your data off and then just the regular specks of dust and stuff in the room air and the particles and stuff like that will eventually render it inoperable. But it would have to be some pretty rare data that I could not recover to get me to go and try something that far and plus you also to be able to uh, replace the parts you have to have another pretty much identical hard drive. You can't just uh, take a motor off, out of any hard drive and put it in any other hard drive. It's got to be. And so uh, yeah that's my personal experience with backups. So ever since that uh, there's an old saying too. I think this goes back even before computers where uh, two is one and one is none as far as uh, carrying tools with you. You know, like if you have a knife in your pocket, well, you might think you have a knife, but what do you do when you lose it? So, always better if you're going to go somewhere where you really, really need a knife. You better have one in your pocket and another one somewhere else. So, that's the expression, two is one and one is none. And I think it's the same way with computer backups. In fact, I think unless you have at least three forms of backup, you pretty much have nothing. Uh, more
more hoping on a wing and a prayer than anything else. So what I do myself is I have one hard drive attached to my computer to where it takes regular scheduled backups every evening about, I don't know, three in the morning, something like that. I think it's got scheduled. Once a month, I have another hard drive that I only attach to the computer for about an hour time once a month, usually at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month, and do my backups that way. And then it disconnected so that it's not connected up even to the computer. And then a third source of backup is I have a cloud account with 100 gigs of storage and all my very most important documents are backed up to the cloud and I put them all in one file and zip them. I don't have any high security documents that way except ones that are encrypted so uh, that's the other thing I would tell you too if you're going to back up any, any of your banking or uh, personal documents you don't want anybody to possibly see, encrypt it first then put it in some kind of folder and back it up so that nobody can possibly see it. Ending mileage, 43, 417.5, 43, 417.5.